Hello Lorenzo, got your steering gearbox all torn down. Here's your gearbox number, and here's the casting number on the side of the box. Here's the various, the major components to the uh, steering gearbox, and as you uh, may recall, we were feeling that the front end was a little sloppy and was not holding like it's supposed to in terms of steering, and so we pulled the top of the box off, and we noticed that there was rust on top of on this part of the um, steering gearbox in this area and where the rust was coming from was the cover that goes on top of the box like this anyway it was rusting inside here and um, flaking off and so we're going to get that cleaned up and out of there and then primed and painted and this was just a lack of oil at some point in time another indication of the uh, lack of oil in there was this seal right here it goes inside this carrier and that's what screws in here and helps set the preload on the bearings that support everything internally and as you can see the inside of this was all rusty the seal is out here and so everything outside is is uh, just atmospheric and, and just uh, no, the normal environment on the inside here this is where the oil runs and there should be nothing in here except clean shiny bright metal and uh, and the oil so this obviously had run out of oil at some time and had rusted and that's another source of the oil tearing up the, the um, recirculating worm we will be machining the shaft <clears throat> getting rid of the um, um, the, the wear right here the the pitting and we also will be machining the new bushings to fit the new shaft We'll be rebuilding this worm. This is uh, notchy. When you move it, it, um, it, it, it feels notchy. So we need to rebuild it. And um, obviously new seals and new bearings. Uh, you can probably see right in here the, the track of the old bearing. That middle section right there. And it's uh, the bearings that, um, have done their job. And it's time to replace them. We also will replace this uh, spring. This is the tension spring that holds everything together internally. Got a new spring. Uh, let's see. Now we'll do, uh, show you how everything works. Let me put this back on the tripod and get this set up. And show you how the thing, everything works together. So what, what we got here is this recirculating worm, which is full of ball bearings and has these uh, races on here for the uh, bearings. Um, so we've got ball bearings inside here, as you can see. So this goes inside here. And uh, it'll, it'll set on a bearing here. Another bearing goes inside here. I won't bother to put that in there. It's not necessary. And then our shaft goes down like this. Our spring sits on top. Cup goes here and it um, pressurizes. It, it puts force on here to keep this shaft from bouncing up, which is what it wants to do when you're, you're turning. So that all that is set internally. Now then, this is what happens when you turn your steering wheel. Your steering wheel is attached here. Your steering column is attached here and a couple feet up is the steering wheel. But anyway, this is what happens when you turn your steering wheel. It moves back and forth. And any slop or wear in the steering worm uh, or the shaft and the bushings that are inside here. Here's the bushing right here. Any wear in those is going to be magnified by the time it gets out to your your wheels. So a little bit of wear and tear right here gets magnified when it gets out to the wheels. So what we got to do is figure out how much slop you've got and compare that with what the factory says you're supposed to have. Let's see. All right, let's put, okay. put our shaft back in here. 
You can only measure it dry without it, without it being assembled. That's why we had to take it apart to check everything. Now I'll get our dial indicator set up. All right, so let's try to figure out what dimensions we want. Let me get the, this off the tripod again. All right, got the 300 SL shot manual. <clears throat> excuse me. And what we're looking, <coughs> excuse me, what we're looking at here, um, um, measures and tolerances of the steering housing in millimeters. And the steering shaft is that big shaft that I was just showing you, which we just stuck inside the uh, housing. And these are the dimensions of the bearing, uh, bearing, which is the the, the the shiny part where the the shaft rides against the um, inside the bushings. All right, and here's our our bushings. We don't worry about the rough turn. That's just the the diameter of the the bushing right near as, as it sits without being machined. What we want is the finished uh, diameter. So what you do is you subtract the 299993 from the 30 and you'll know that that is 0 0.007 millimeters clearance. So that's the that's the dif distance that's the clearance between the shaft and the uh, out OD of the shaft and the ID of the bushing. And the other dimension is the 29980, and you subtract that from the 30.013, and that is uh, 0 0.033 millimeters, and that's the range of slop that they will allow you. And so I've already done the, already had that converted, and we are measuring, since my equipment measures in thousandths of an inch, we are converting to, to um, inches, and uh, so the smallest diameter, the 0 .007 millimeters, I should make it, make a note right there, that's millimeters. All right, so that dimension in millimeters translates to 0 .0027 inches. And this dimension right here translates to 0 0.001 inches. That's one thousandths of an inch. This one here is, uh, this is tenths, hundreds, thousandths, ten thousandths, and, tw and hundred thousandths. So that's 27 one hundred thousandths of an inch. And I got news for you. My equipment does not measure it's, uh, to the darn near the molecular uh, level. Uh, my equipment will measure in one thousandths of an inch increments. And to give you an idea of how teeny that is, a human hair, typical human hair, measures two thousandths of an inch diameter. So that's the sloppiest, the most worn out of the bo that the box can be in terms of internal slop is um, uh, half the thickness of a human hair. And on the smaller end, uh, they've got uh, a measurement down here that is uh, so minute as to be... Um, I think you know most laboratories would be lucky to be able to measure in that um, uh, that dimension there. That's just amazingly. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how how teeny that is. Anyway, let's let's measure. See what you've actually got in your steering box here. Again, remember my equipment only measures in thousandths of an inch increment, not in. <laughs> hundred thousandths of an inch increment. Uh, so what we're going to do is we got a dial indicator and we're going to move the shaft back and forth and see what we got in the way of slop. Okay, so let's get our zero over here. Zero right there. One extreme to the other. Yeah. This is very delicate work. Try to get this set up. Maybe you can hear me making noise with this thing. I'll, I'll be quiet and you can listen for the clicking.
Got 4,000 clearance. Almost. All right. There's three right there. Depends on where I am on the threads here. Let's, let's see if I can move this over. Get a little bit better location. I mean, that's how minute, I mean, that's how delicate it is to try to get these measurements. I'm trying to measure something in, in increments of half the diameter of a human hair, and it's it's not easy. Okay, here's our zero. All right, zero. There's three. And you can hear it making the noise. Let me get this down closer where you can actually maybe can hear it. Anyway, there are rapier ends at least four times as much movement as you're supposed to have. And that is why we are in here repairing the steering gearbox. So thank you uh, for hanging in there with me as I went through all this technical stuff. And see if there's anything else I need to mention while we're here. Oh, well, let's see. Yeah, we can come over and take a look at your wheel bearings. We've got those working. Um, got them off. And the problem we had was there's too much slop on the um, front wheel bearings. And, uh, in fact, I'll show you what we need to do there while we're here. Here we go. Setting up the wheel bearings. We need to use the same dial indicator. And this is how you adjust the um, uh, play on the, the front wheel bearings. And uh, that had not been done previously. And this will give you an idea uh, how much the... Um, Check the end play. End play should be near to 0. 0.0002 inches. That is two ten thousandths of an inch. That give you an idea what kind of uh, dimensions they've got in terms of uh, sloppiness on the wheel bearings. So when we got in there, they were rattling around like the uh, steering gearbox was. Also, um, what we run into on this right rear bearing, uh, it is, it, this thing also is sloppy. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Not supposed to do that. So we're going to go in there and see what we got going on that situation um what else let's see what else got um yeah you can always show you your instruments got the new bulbs installed let's see if you can if you can see the difference here
Now you can read the instruments. That, I think, brings us up to date. Uh, thank you very much again for your patience. We're doing the best we can to get you a car that you can depend on. Thank you.